Hi everyone, this is Zach. Today, I'll be talking to you about relational data. Uh, this, these slides are adapted from chapter 13 of the book R for Data Science. And also, a little bit of this is taken from this article on Wikipedia. So, uh, basically, we'll be talking about these two topics. The first, that information can be spread across multiple data tables, and you often have to combine data tables to answer questions that you are interested in. So first, why don't we just store all of our data in a single data frame with many columns? When you do that, uh, so it's firstly, it's more natural for each table to store information for one entity type. So there are different types of entities, and it's more natural for each table to have information of only one entity type. And in the next few slides, we'll see how it's easy to make errors when you work with one huge data table. For example, let's consider a table of faculty and their courses, as shown here. Let's say an update anomaly occurs when you try to update the information, but only some of the rows are updated. For example, let's say Dr. Sapernstein changes his or her name to Dr. Stark, but only one of the two rows is updated. Then the information in the table is not correct. An insertion anomaly occurs when you add when information cannot be added to the table. For example, let's say there's a new professor, Dr. Newsom, who is hired but has not been assigned to teach any courses yet. Then you can't store this faculty's information in the table. Finally, a deletion anomaly occurs when deleting some data leads to unrelated data being deleted. For example, if Dr. Giddens is no longer assigned to teach this course because perhaps it was cancelled, then we no longer have the, the faculty member's ID or faculty hire date anymore in the system. And if you store the information in two separate tables, one table for faculty and another for courses, then this problem is solved. All right, so now let's talk about how to combine data tables. So the relational model of data organizes data into multiple tables, and each table represents one entity type. Each row in a table represents an instance of that entity type, and each column represents values attributed to that instance. To identify an uh, observation, you need to use what is known as a key. A key is a column or a set of columns that uniquely identifies an observation. A primary key uniquely identifies an observation in its own table, whereas a foreign key uniquely identifies an observation in another table. For example, uh, in this data table of students, the primary key is student ID, because every student will have a different student ID. Name is not a primary key because some students could have the same name. Although it's not that common, it does happen. For the courses data table, the primary key would be the columns semester, course code, and section, because these three columns together uniquely identify an observation, a course. All right, so now let's talk about the two types of join functions in the dplyr package. 
The first type are known as mutating joints because they create new columns. Uh, they add columns from Y to column to the data frame X. On the other hand, a filtering joint does not create new columns, but it reduces or filters the observations in X based on whether they match observations in Y. And here are the six dplyr join functions that we will talk about in the next few slides. Uh, we'll be working with the, these two example data frames, band members and band instruments. The four mutating joins are shown uh, in the table and in the using the Venn diagrams below. An inner join it keeps observations that appear in both X and Y. So this is similar to intersection. A left join keeps observations in X. A right join keeps observations in Y. And a full join keeps observations in X or Y. So in set notation, this would be called X union Y. The inner join of band numbers and band instruments is shown here. So notice that Mick, who is from the band Stones, Mick does not appear in band instruments. So Mick is deleted in the result. Similarly, Keith does not appear in band members. So Keith is also deleted. Only John and Paul, who both appear in both tables, are kept. And you can see the result has three columns, uh, name and band from band members, and name and place from band instruments. A full join keeps every observation and puts in NA for those missing values. So Mick does not play anything that we know of, and Keith is not in any band that we know of. A left join keeps only the observations in the band members and puts NA for values that are not observed in the second table. A right join, well, you shouldn't use right join, uh, as advised by uh, Hadley Wickham and Garrett Grolemond. They advised you to use a left join by default. And unless you have a very strong reason to prefer one of the others. Basically, don't use the right join, and usually the left join is the one that you want. Now let's talk about the two filtering joins. A semi-join keeps all observations that have a match in Y, whereas an anti-join drops all observations that have a match in Y. So for example, a semi-join of band members and band instruments will keep John and Paul because these two members match in band instruments, whereas an anti-join keeps Mick because Mick does not match in band instruments. All right, so that's all about relational data. Do continue to run the script to see how it works using R code, and talk to you again next time. Bye.